Hey everybody, welcome to part one of painting Reflective Dreams. Um, grab your paints, paint along with me. We're gonna have some fun. Okay, well, to start off with, let's see what we have. Um, I have a 12 by 16 canvas panel that I made, it's homemade. Um, the sides aren't true, I just used a circular saw to cut it. Didn't get out the miter saw or the uh, or the table saw, so it's fine though. Um, I've never really painted on a canvas panel that has an MDF core. Uh, the only ones I've done are just um, these cheap ones that have a uh, cardboard core, and I don't really care to, too much for them. But this has an MDF core, we'll see how it goes. Uh, the paints I'm using, are the Windsor Newton Artisan uh, water mixable oils. These, you can use traditional oils, it worked just fine. I just like water mixables. Um, the colors, titanium white, Naples yellow, cad yellow, uh, sap green, alizarin crimson, phthalo blue, burnt umber. Down here I have a black that I made from uh, Burnt Umber and French Ultramarine Blue. Uh, equal parts, mix it up, you get this really nice black that I like better than anything I have found in a tube. But don't get me wrong, the ivory black, lamp black, Mars black, that'll all work just fine. Um, I just uh, made this myself, I like it. Then I just changed its tonal value with um, some titanium white. I'm picturing some over here. I have it sketched out too, kinda. Um, but I'm picturing some blue-gray mountains. So, yeah, that's what we have. So, to get started here, I am going to get a little bit of linseed oil. Uh, also, I covered the whole canvas panel with linseed oil, and then I wiped it off with a shop towel and so the surface is, I mean, it, it's almost dry, but there's a little bit of oil on there. It's just going to help the paint move around. So let's get started. I'm going to take some uh, phthalo blue. And uh, let's see, we'll put that right here. Phthalo blue. I'm going to add some white to it. A little bit of white. Phthalo blue just a touch maybe a little more of a touch just a touch of burnt umber in that there we go all the burnt umber is doing is just grain it down slightly so it doesn't look so candy colored and we're going to start off and we're going to start putting us in a nice little sky i'm just using a half inch chip brush here um if you've watched my video on water mixable oils i talk about how i really don't use real expensive brushes i i just don't see really the need to um in most circumstances now we all have our our favorite brushes and um, so forth but like for the one inch brushes the, the half inch brushes these chip brushes work just fine for me so throw us in a little bit of the sky here and i'm just using a kind of a crisscross pattern just getting the paint on there we're going to blend this I don't really want to get rid of lighter and darker uh, spots in here. Um, it, uh, leaving those things in, it kind of gives your sky some movement. I'm going to lighten it up as I go down. I'm not using a white medium on here. You you could. Um, you could use your white medium, whatever you happen to use, whether you make your own, you use, you know, liquid white, amazing white, uh, magic white. 
Grand Ultimate Supreme White. But yeah, you could you could put a uh, a white medium on here and use it, and you wouldn't really have to add nearly as much white. I just kind of like to control the hue myself. So let's just get that in. Maybe we'll go a little bit darker up in here. Ooh, that was way too much umber there. Uh, see there what I did? Hey, we're really painting. <laughs> the good, the bad, the ugly. Shades in here. And some lighter ones down here. Okay, now I'm gonna just take a one inch chip brush here and I'm just gonna start blending this a little bit. Yeah, we'll get us a nice little sky in here. a little bit and I'm just I'm just wiping out here on a paper towel you know I heard Wilson Bickford once say if you if there's paint on your brush you're painting if there's no paint on your brush you're blending and you know he's he wasn't entirely wrong there <laughs> there we go <clears throat> and there is our nice little sky all right well maybe we'll put a few little clouds in so I'm going to take a fan brush and I'm going to wash out my fan brush because this has soap, dried soap in it from when I shaped it the last time. So I'm just going to rinse it out, get the soap out. Now this is a step if you're using traditional oils, you probably don't need to do because <laughs> uh, you should not be cleaning your brushes in uh, water if they are natural bristle um, they will fray but you can shape them using soap and they'll last a little little while longer now i don't have any problems with these fan brushes or any of my you know filberts and flats and brights and rounds all that good stuff okay i'm gonna put in a little bit of clouds just some, a few little clouds. I'm gonna take some white. I'm gonna take just a touch. It might even be too much. Just a touch of crimson. Yeah, that is too much. Take some more white. Okay, there we go. There we go. I wanna have uh, a little bit of pink in the sky because I'm gonna, right down here in this corner, I'm going to be putting some bushes and so forth in, and I want to put a few pink flowers in here too. So I kind of want some pink in the sky, you know, kind of uh, 
I don't know, like a uniformity of color? I don't, I don't know how you'd say it. I just think it'd look cool. How's that? Plus, this pink in these clouds is going to be pretty subtle. So, I'm just forming some cloud shapes here. And honestly, it really doesn't matter how you put the the paint onto the canvas um, for your clouds. In fact, the more haphazard, I think, uh, the better. Because clouds don't have a certain shape. They are shaped the, however they feel like being shaped. So... One thing you do notice, though, is they kind of fuzz out here on the bottom. It just kind of like blends right in. And then we're going to fluff this up, the tops, and just kind of go over it. There we go. There we go. I just want some nice, pretty clouds back there. I don't want any, a lot of shadow, you know, dark looking clouds. So I'm just going to get some more of this. We'll go back over here. Let's, uh, let's make us a little cloud over here. And, and leave some of this negative space in here because when you blend it'll it'll just it'll look cool. <laughs> you know. If there's a big spot there, you know, that's still blue, that's cool. That's cool. It's gonna look great. Just hang in there. Take a little more white, grab some of that pink that's right there. I'm just kind of putting them in wherever I think it'd kind of be kind of cool. Just wispy little little cloud formations. There we go. We'll put that down and I'm going to take my one inch brush and we're going to come down here. We're going to blend some more. I'm just going to fuzz out the bottoms. And these back here, these small ones, I might just very lightly just go over there we go i'm gonna fluff up this top over here all right let's fuzz out this bottom And that's about what I want for my clouds. Okay, I'm just wiping that brush out a little bit. I'm gonna wipe out this one, this half inch brush, just a little bit. I'm not gonna bother washing it out with the water at this moment. Uh, you know, Bob used to say that washing the brushes was the fun part. I think he was pulling our legs because I don't I, I, I don't really find it all that fun. <laughs> all right, let's see here. Oh gone. I think I am missing a brush that I want. Ah, there we go. There we go. I think that's the one that I want. Okay, now this one. I'm going to give a little wash out in the water just to get anything that might be in it out. I didn't really feel any dried soap in it, but I gave it a little wash in the water. 
Get a little bit of linseed oil on it and just dab off the excess. Okay, now I want to move on to some mountains. Now, like I said, they're kind of, in my mind, a gray-blue. Um, I don't want to start off just with my black. I'm going to go to this one here that's grayed down, or, or lightened up, I should, I should say. It's lightened up. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to add a little phthalo blue to that. I want it to have a blue tone, and I'm going to take a little bit of white. Maybe a little bit more. Uh, I think I'm going to go with a next one over. Now, after I made this i actually let it sit on a piece of cardboard for about an hour um just to soak up any excess oil that might be in it because i'm going to be using some knife or using the knife uh i'm going to be using the knife on it to add some uh highlights and shadows but right now i just want to get in the shape that i want Now, Bob used to do this part with uh, a knife, and you sure can do that. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just going to use a, I've got a flat uh, here. What is this? A number eight flat. I'm just getting my shape put in that I want. And I'm going to do one mountain at a time. And I'm just getting my, I'm just getting some color put on here. As I said, I'll be putting highlights and shadows on uh, with a little bit of knife work. I don't know how I'm gonna do with knife work on a panel. I've never tried it. I don't know. It may be an, maybe a disaster. But it may not be. So just getting that color put in. I don't think I'm going to really blend this too much uh, up in here. Maybe I might fuzz it out down near the bottom, but it's a mountain. It should have kind of a rough look to it, don't you think? I mean, that's what I'm thinking. Um, okay, I'm going to wipe off that, that brush. And... Might even take a little bit of white. I'm digging that. You know, there's there's never a bad time to stop 
take you a sip of coffee. Just sit back and let's take a look at that for a second. <clears throat> All right. Ah. A little bit of coffee in the morning does a body good. <laughs> okay. So, I'm going to take some of this tone of gray. I am going to add maybe a little touch of blue here. Just a little touch of blue. I don't want to overwhelm it. Okay. And we will see about highlighting this. Beginning our highlights anyways. And I'm just touching, touching the canvas and just letting it pull off what it wants. Okay. Take a little more. There we go. just put these in now I don't know how well this is showing up on on the recording but I'm just lightening I've just lightened the tone that we had put up here as our base and and so I want it to look distant I want it to look rocky which is a great movie, by the way. <laughs> I'm, I've been wanting to watch Rocky. It's been a while. I remember... <laughs> uh, I'm going to show how old I, I really am, but I remember when it came out, when it was brand new, and I think it was 76. I'm pretty sure it was 76. Um, it came out at the movies, and I remember going with a friend of mine, his name was David Young. We have lost touch, he lives at, at, he lives in California, or last I, I knew, he lived in California, but heck, uh, that was high school age, <laughs> so I haven't seen him since, we lost touch, but I'll tell you man, we were like best friends in, uh, when we were kids. Okay. Yeah, but um, we went and saw Rocky and it was actually a double feature with the movie Coma. And, uh, we went, saw that, I came out of there, I didn't know anything about Rocky, I mean, it was like, we just wanted to go to the movies, you know, we didn't want to be at home, I mean, that was way back in the day when your parents would tell you to go outside and play and come home when the street lights were on, you know, I miss that world. I find, I, I, I think it's so sad that my grandchildren can't have that world, that we've got to constantly worry about their safety um, in today's, in today's world. There's just, uh, not to say that, you know, there wasn't, there weren't dangers when I was a kid, but honestly, I never thought about them. Okay. You know, when you're a kid, you shouldn't have to think about them. Okay. 
we're just gonna just keep just a little bit of paint on a palette knife or painting knife. I don't really know the difference, but I heard someone once say there was a difference. I don't care. I'll use a scrap piece of wood around here if it'll give me the effect I'm, I'm desiring. Now, <laughs> there's gonna be some highlights on this one. Because I'm imagining the sun's coming from over this direction. We don't see it up there in the sky, but it's like over here. go. All right, now let's get a little bit of dark and a little bit of phthalo blue. I mean, I don't know really what to call these. They're all shades of gray. Ooh. How many shades? 50? No, I got five. <laughs> okay. Some of this and come over here. Put a little dark color in. Um, I got interested in using ca canvas panels because um, a local artist friend of mine, and I had never met her, but we had talked back on back and forth on my uh, on the. Uh, Oh, what's the name of that app? Neighborhood app. And, you know, she had some water mixable oils that she wanted to sell. She's actually an acrylic artist, and she tried them, and, you know, they just weren't for her. And that's cool, you know. And she wanted to know if I'd be interested. I said, yeah. You know, how much? And she told me. The price was great. So I said, okay, sure. Well, she also gave me, and I offered to pay, and she would not accept any money for it. It's a painting box, and it's an antique, actually. It belonged to a friend of hers uh, who was an art appraiser, and he had passed it on to her, and she wanted to pass it on to me. And that painting box will hold canvas panels. In fact, you can use it to transport wet canvas panels, which as an oil, uh, as an oil painter, <laughs> if you're an oil painter, you know, transporting wet canvases can be problematic. Uh, so this thing has slots that you can slide your um, panels in and they keep them separated by, I don't know, quarter to a half inch so they don't touch and you can transport them. It folds up like a briefcase and it's really, really cool. So that's why I got interested in the canvas panels. But I made these. These are with five millimeter MDF, and uh, yeah, they would just barely fit into the slots. And as soon as I put the canvas on here, yeah, not fitting anymore. Okay, now on this mountain, I'm gonna take some of that white, some of that cloud uh, mixture that we use, kind of the pink mainly white and I am actually going to put some high highlights on here because they're just a bit just a bit of snow on my mountain not a whole lot I don't want to overwhelm it
maybe a little bit right back here. Just here on the tip. There we go. And that's what uh, I was looking for, pretty much. Okay. Well, right down here at the base of this mountain. Right down here at the base of this here mountain. I'm picturing some trees. But they're so far away, they just look like green, really. So I'm going to take some sap green. sap green and I want to lighten that up because this is so far away however I don't know that I want to lighten it up with white so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some Naples jello and let's see what happens I'll, I'll be honest with you I'm not real sure a little Naples jello a little sap green let's see let's see what it looks like Hold still. Yeah, maybe a little more sap green. That might be too light. Just put a little green down here at the base of this mountain. Oh, and the brush I'm using, I'll be honest, I don't know exactly what kind of brush this is. Well, it's a natural bristle brush. I think it may have started its life as a flat. I'm not sure. It came in a pack of like five brushes. And I never liked them until I started doing different techniques. And it's all splayed out and, you know, it's really not a flat anymore. It's, I don't know, a stubby brush or something. I don't know. But I like it. I like it. Uh, the effects that I get from it. Now, actually, down in here, it should actually be darker. This up here, lighter. So I'm going to darken this up a little bit. I'm going to go with the sap green. I'm going to take just a touch of phthalo blue. Try and darken that up a little bit. Maybe a little more phthalo blue. And maybe just a touch of oil. That green, phthalo blue. It's been a long time since I've done a paint along. It really has been. But 
since I'm uh, going the way of water mixables, I thought, well, heck, why not? Let's let's do a little paint along, see what we can come up with. I'm gonna take a little bit of Naples yellow, just on its own, and kind of mix it in with uh, whatever happens to be on my brush here. Just smashing that brush out. I'm just gonna go in here and just touch in spots. I want to try and give an illusion of far away trees, bushes, vegetation. There we go. Alright. Okay. Alright, well, it appears to me like we should have us another mountain coming in here. So, I'm going to go uh, back here into my base uh, for my mountain. And we're going to add some phthalo blue. There we go. And let's make us another little mountain here. Just putting in the shape of my mountain, pulling some paint down here, and we'll add shadows and highlights and see what we can come up with. A little more. I'm just going to go ahead and make the rest of this. I was going to try and separate some, but as I'm going along, that's a nice thing, you know. You, you're creating your own little world. Uh, I was going to have like a mountain here, pushed back, and then one coming forward. And I may still do that depending on how the highlights and shadows go, but... Let's just go ahead and put all this in right now. Now I have a drawing on here, but it's just mainly just kind of a guide just so I remember what idea I had in mind. <laughs> Doesn't mean I necessarily have to follow it though. And as I said, you know, Bob would have done all this with a knife. And that's cool if that's what you want to do. Um, you can do it with a knife. I just wanted to do it with a brush. Nice gray, blue mountain.
Just getting some color in. And would this be quicker with a bigger brush? Absolutely, it sure would, but I'm not, I'm not trying to break any land speed records here, you know, just enjoy the process. Now remember, it's your world, you can create it however you want. And you know, however you decide you want it to be, that's exactly how it should be. One thing that I have found since I started painting is there are a lot of people, a lot of people, whether well-intentioned or not, who will tell you what you are allowed and not allowed to paint. I do nudes from time to time. I, not many. Oh. I cannot even begin to tell you the amount of flack that I have gotten over that. And it, in the beginning, it bothered me. It bothered me greatly. You know? It's like, I'm just trying to create something beautiful, some a uh, piece of art. This is my world. Why why are you telling me I can't I can't do this or I can't do that? Don't let anyone tell you. If you want to create a piece of art, I don't care if it's in your heart, then do it. Then do it and create it the way that you want it. Use the techniques you want to do. Let the composition be how you want it. Let the, the subject matter be what you choose. Unless you're doing a commission piece, of course, and then your client's actually paying you to tell you how they want it, which that's cool. There's nothing at all wrong with that. But I mean, when you're just painting for you and it's flowing from your heart, never let anybody tell you what you're allowed to paint and what you're not. When I say that, I'm not saying that these people said, oh, you're not allowed to paint that. Not in those words. It was more of, I can't believe you painted something like that. Oh, that's wrong. You shouldn't do that. Oh, that objectify, objectifies this group or that group or, you know. I, no, that is not the intention. It does not. For instance, with, with a nude, I am not trying to objectify anybody. It's just, I think, I, I, I believe, I believe in a creator. I believe in a God. I believe in my, I believe in God. Um, and I believe that the human body, that creation, is one of the most beautiful creations ever. And I celebrate it. I don't celebrate it being sexual or anything in that nature. Although people accuse me of that. Okay, I'm going off on a tangent. Okay, let's get back to our landscape. <laughs> All right. Uh, excuse me, I got on my soapbox for a minute. Okay, let's start adding some highlights. I guess in the end, what I'm saying is you paint what's in your heart and don't let anyone ever tell you otherwise. Your art is important. If it's important to nobody else in the world, it's important to you. It's important to your soul. It's important to who you are inside.
know, sun catches just a little bit back here. Now, I know this can get real repetitive when you're just barely putting any paint on, but take your time with it and just let the canvas take what it wants. Use different, different colors, different tones, different hues, because in nature you have all of that. Nature is not limited, or ha I should say, nature has an unlimited color palette. We don't. In fact, there are colors in nature that we have not ever been able to make. But when you're painting, go ahead and use more than two colors. Go ahead and use multiple colors, mul multiple tones, multiple shades. Don't be afraid of it. I guess that's what I'm saying. Put some blue into there. A little bit more umber. too blue there. Hey, we're really painting here. <laughs> Isn't that something like what Emerald Lagasse used to say? Hey, we're really cooking here. <laughs> Just kind of move that that uh, paint wherever you feel it needs to go. Just kind of just pull it in there. I think this. Just create these layers. I mean, remember when we started with, you know, when I first put this base color on, it looked very flat. Shil uh, the shadows and the highlights. That is going to, that is going to make things almost three dimensional. wherever you think it should go. Honestly, I kind of like the way that this uh, palette knife is working on this on this panel. Oh, I'm sorry guys, we got that light up there. Let's fix that. Fix that. Okay. Now, I will probably take a little bit of this here black. As I said, I, I made this. 
uh, out of burnt umber and um, French uh, ultramarine blue. And I just think it is such a nice color. Although, I have been told black is not a color. I don't know how that works, but it's a color. I've always thought it was a color. <laughs> Putting this black in just where the deepest, darkest shadows are going to be. Lighten it up just a fuzz. Right down through here. I don't really like the way this is, so let's fix that. dark area, a little more dark down in here. Just added a little bit black to that. Might be a little bit darker. I just felt that this area right here was just kind of flat. I mean, it's still the background. It's not like you're going to be uh, really focused in on it. It's just, it's, they're just background mountains. Okay. Let's highlight this. some lighter lights right up here.
Dark Shadow. Right over here. Yeah, I know, I got a little bit here, but it, it'll be all right. Honestly, a lot of this is about to get covered up anyways. All right, we're almost done with our mountains. Get a little, I'll keep going there. There we go. A little dark in here. I'll bring those two together. There we go. Now let's uh, take a sip of coffee. Kick back. Take a look at what we have. Okay. All right, I kind of like that. Now, I am just going to come down here. I'm just going to blend. Very, very lightly. Might even add just a touch of white right out here. Okay, well, I am going to move on, but I have just decided that this will be a two-part paint along um, because I see my recording has now hit one hour. I did not expect it to be this long, but that is okay. I'm not going to hurry through this. Um, I kinda, I'm, I'm kind of digging the way this is uh, coming out, and I'm going to try and take my time and make a make my world paint my world here so catch me on part two of this uh, paint along um, it will be uploaded right there on YouTube just take a look it should be the next one down okay I'll talk to you all later